Hey what's up and how's it going? This is Toby and as someone deeply immersed in the world of augmented reality, I firsthand witnessed all the incredible strides this technology has done in the last couple of years. But let's be real, being an AR developer is not only sunshine and rainbows, but they're actually real challenges to overcome. And in today's video, I want to share with you the three major challenges I constantly run into when doing AR development in 2025. So if you're an aspiring AR developer, be ready to also run into these challenges. And if you're already doing AR development I would be super interested in your opinion do you have the same problems do you have figured out your own solutions for these or what are your challenges when doing AR development so let's get started number one cross-platform AR development remains complex despite advancements building AR applications that seamlessly run across various devices like smartphones and AR headsets from different providers continues to be a hurdle Tools like Unity's AR Foundation and OpenXR aim to simplify this, but developers often encounter device-specific limitations and inconsistencies. For instance, deploying the same Unity scene to both a smartphone and a headset like the MetaQuest or Apple Vision Pro may require significant adjustments due to difference in hardware capabilities and input methods. This fragmentation necessitates additional development time and resources to ensure a consistent user experience across platforms. Developing AR apps also requires extensive testing, and since you might not always have your headset or phone at hand, and you also need to test your experience in various locations, having a good simulator is key. While simulations for mobile phones work quite well in Unity, simulating cross-platform apps remains challenging. XR headset simulators can still be quite janky, with a few exceptions such as Lens Studio, which excels in this area. Number two, limitations of WebXR development. WebXR has opened doors for browser-based AR experiences running anywhere, making it ideal for cross-platform use. However, its adaptation on iOS devices remains limited. While Apple has introduced WebXR support in Safari for Vision OS, this support is primarily for VR experiences and doesn't extend to AR functionalities on iPhones and iPads. This lack of comprehensive support restricts developers from delivering immersive AR experiences through the web on a significant portion of mobile devices. While there are exceptions such as 8th Wall, which has its own SLAM system for iOS apps, these kind of on-top implementations come with their own caveats. Web-based AR applications often face performance challenges, especially on mobile devices. Features like real-time environment meshing and precise co-localization demand substantial processing power, which can lead to laggy or unresponsive experiences when delivered through the browser. Developers must employ various optimization techniques, such as reducing 3D model complexity and minimizing draw calls to enhance performance. However, these optimizations can only go so far and achieving consistent native-like performance in web-based AR remains a significant challenge. Number three, the wait for consumer-ready AR glasses. As of mid-2025, while several AR headsets have been introduced, a truly consumer-ready device that seamlessly integrates into daily life remains elusive. Currently, we do have the Apple Vision Pro, which was released in early 2024, and while it offers advanced mixed reality experience, its bulkiness and high price point limit its appeal for everyday use. The MetaQuest 3, on the other hand, also provides impressive mixed reality capabilities at a more accessible price. However, its form factor is still more suited for gaming and specific applications rather than all day wear. Snap AR's latest spectacles offer great AR functionalities at a small and light form factor and are in my opinion almost at the point where a regular consumer would wear it and use it on a day-to-day -day basis. However, it is only targeted at developers and therefore cannot be used in any ways as a day-to-day -day AR glasses for consumers. While we can definitely see progress happening, the main challenges remain. The form factor. Achieving a lightweight, stylish design that users are comfortable wearing throughout the day is a significant hurdle. Also the battery life, ensuring a prolonged usage without frequently having to charge your headset or need to turn it off is essential for practicality. The display technology. Developing displays that are both high quality and energy efficient with a wide field of view remains a big challenge. The software ecosystem. 
a robust ecosystem of applications and integration with existing smart devices is crucial to provide values and utilities to the users, which probably come from either a smartphone, tablet, or some kind of laptop. Despite these challenges, the future of AR is incredibly promising. The industry is actively working on solutions to these problems and tools are getting better each month. As developers, we have the opportunity to shape the future of augmented reality. And now is the perfect time to get involved in AR development, as it's still a niche field with immense potential for growth and innovation. So let's embrace this journey and continue building incredible AR experiences that will shape the industry and bring augmented reality from a niche to the mainstream. So with that said, I'm pretty interested in your guys' opinion. Would you agree with me on these major challenges in AR development? And do you have any other challenges that you run into in your day-to-day -day developer life? So please leave a comment below and let's discuss there. But until then, as always, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.